I remember back when I first started my business, a lot of people were talking about clients coming out of nowhere, and I thought something was wrong with me or broken about me um, because I just could not seem to figure out why I was not manifesting clients out of nowhere. Welcome to the Aligned and Magnetic podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Ashley. I'm an ICF certified business alignment coach, and they call me the money mindset and manifestation queen. I'm here to help you make your vision for your life and business a reality and doing it in a way that lights you the fuck up. If you're ready to build an aligned, magnetic, and profitable business so that you can live the life of your dreams, you are definitely in the right place. In this podcast, I promise to provide you with the raw lessons, the tools, and powerful questions to help you on the way to creating success your way. Thank you so much for being here. Now let's dive in. Hi, hi, love. Welcome back to the Aligned and Magnetic podcast. I am so excited to be sharing with you guys today this more woo-woo podcast episode I really want to dive into the energetics and the manifestation and the mindset and all the stuff I really love to talk about. So let's start with manifestation. Manifestation is the process of bringing something into reality through positive thinking and belief. It is the idea that by focusing on a desire or a goal and truly believing that it can be achieved, you can make it happen. This can be done through visualization affirmations, and taking action towards your goal. The idea is that our thoughts and beliefs have a powerful impact on our reality, and by aligning our thoughts and actions with what we want to manifest, we can bring it into our lives. This is the definition that I found on the Googles, um, so hopefully that kind of clarifies. But the thing I want to highlight here really quickly before we dive in is that it takes the combination, right? Manifestation takes the combination of positive thinking and belief in yourself, visualization, and and taking action toward your goals, right? And I think this is a really key piece that people miss, taking action toward their goals. And also, in my experience, once I got into the taking action element, I still was not manifesting clients out of nowhere, and I felt so confused. So I want to really clarify all of this for you today and help you to kind of see maybe why you're not manifesting clients out of nowhere from an energetics perspective. Last week, um, I did an episode on attracting soulmate clients. And just to recap, we talked about alignment, we talked about magnetism, and we talked about consistency. In the alignment piece, we talked about creating aligned offers, um, creating an aligned message, creating an aligned brand, and also aligning your mindset with where you want to go. We need to have alignment with ourselves and with source or God or the universe um, in order to call in that which we desire, right? But that's not the only piece. If you are selling something, you're taking action, you're selling something, you're putting something out there for the world, that you don't actually believe in or that you don't actually want to be selling or you are teaching something that you don't believe in or um, if you don't believe in yourself, sorry, not sorry, but your business is going to suffer. You're going to see that in your results. In the next episode, I'm going to be talking about how your results are a mirror and how you can actually use that mirror to kind of problem solve and fix different elements in your business to actually get the results that you desire. So make sure you're staying tuned for that episode as well. I'm so excited. I'm like all over here planning and it feels really good to be in a space of like knowing what's coming up. I feel like before I really used to just fly by the seat of my pants, which is also a vibe. I feel like when you're testing and experimenting with things, but I feel like I'm like grown up now in my business and I'm like, okay, let's put systems in place. Let's, let's create, you know, consistency. Let's I don't know, just like show up in a more um, powerful and professional, if you will, I say that with air quotes, way. Okay, the second thing we talked about in last week's episode is your magnetism. So this is about how you're showing up. If you want to sell, 
8K or 10K packages, are you showing up as the version of you who sells and like actually gets clients at 8 or 10K? And then we talked about the consistency element, which creates profitability over time. I find a lot of people, including myself, I've struggled with this too. They will put something out there for a little while and then go through a maybe a little bit of a blip or down. I find this happens a lot with entrepreneurs who put everything in for like a launch, for example, and they just keep going and going and going and they don't give themselves a break, which leads to burnout, which leads to inconsistent results. Um, So the consistency element is showing up in a balanced way. And it's also about showing up consistently. So a beginner entrepreneur is probably going to struggle with that consistency because if you don't see results right away, you kind of go through this process of like, are people even listening to me? Are people even here? Like, hello, who am I talking to? Um, And that can be a whole thing. I've been there as well. The other element to this is... Do you have a way of showing up consistency online in a way that feels good for you? I also find entrepreneurs will show up, you know, whether it's like on Facebook or Instagram and they just like don't like what they're doing, that creates a lot of resistance. So my thing in business is always how do we remove the resistance and make this process easier for you to show up? If you're not showing up, you're not going to sell. Um, there's this little fish taco place here in my town, right? And I love it. They sell such good fish tacos. They sell shrimp tacos, the sauces. Oh my God, everything is so good about it. But I never know when they're open, okay? And so if I never know when they're open and one day I just want fish tacos, I drive by their clothes. Next day I want fish tacos, I drive by their clothes. This does not create a business that I can trust, So when my friends and family come here, for example, I'm not going to refer them to go to that place because I never know if they're going to be open. So you can kind of see how, you know, consistency and showing up consistently for your brand, especially when you're running an online business because you don't have a storefront. Your storefront is your social media. It is your website, your blog, your podcast. And if you are not showing up in your store and opening your doors, Um, your clients will not know what to expect of you or when they can come in and check out what you've got to offer, right? All right, so once we've cleared our energy, we've got an aligned offer, we have a message that speaks to our soulmate clients, which I don't think I actually defined what soulmate client is. (laughs) To me, ideal clients are great. Ideal clients are ones that come to you Um, they want to invest in your program, but they might be a little bit more difficult in the sense that they might have more investment objections. Um, they might not be willing to put in the work. They are just, they're ideal, right? But they take more work when it comes to getting them in the program, when it comes to actually being in the program. They might have more mindset blockages around showing up for themselves. Soulmate clients, however, this is my own personal definition. I don't know what Google has to say about this. Soulmate clients to me are people who are meant to work with you. Now, I believe everybody is meant to work with you. Um, I believe that we are all meant to work with the people that we work with, right? For one reason or another, we were led there. We were guided there. Soulmate clients, there's like this deep inner knowing that you are meant to work with this person. The conversations that you have, they're deep. They're heart-opening conversations. It's like you know each other and you are just, you really connect, right? Think of it literally as a soulmate but in client form. Typically, when I know a soulmate client is like a soulmate client, when A, our connection call, we completely hit it off. Um, I just feel that they are ready. They know that they're ready. And I notice that there are a lot less hesitations around the investment piece. And this can be A, because they've gotten to know you And they've also worked on their own money mindset, whatever it might be. But by the time your soulmate client comes to you, they're ready to invest in you. And even if they don't have the money or even if investing is a little bit scary, 
it's not a lot of work to try to get them to that place of being ready to invest, right? There are the physical actions we can take, right? So there's the consistency. We can show up consistently. There's the magnetism. We can show up as if we already have 10K clients. We can show up, you know, nice, professional. We can show up in a way that we are leaders in our business, right? Um, We can create aligned offers, offers that are on our heart, programs that are on our heart that we really, really want to get out there into the world. And there is another layer to this, which is the energy work, okay? And the energy work is, for me, what helps to get from point A to point B. When you're doing the physical actions, you're being consistent online, you're doing the things and you still might not be getting results and you're like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Why am I not getting results yet? Well, it might be in the energy work. And so the energy work is the stuff that we do that's like not really forward facing. It's the things that we do on a day-to-day basis. So energy work can look like working on letting go of control. This is a huge one for my clients is that They're often control freaks. They're often like trying to do everything. They have a hard time delegating or letting go of how something is done, especially in the household. Um, They have a hard time getting their heads around the fact that they don't have to do everything perfectly in order to start seeing results, in order to start putting themselves out there, right? Right. And so a really big thing that I work on with my clients is like doing all the things and also letting go of control, letting go of when the outcome comes to you and trusting, having faith that the actions that you take in your business are going to lead to results. I feel like having a business is the biggest surrendering experiment, if that makes sense. When you have a job, right, you go to your job and you trust you're going to get paid. When you're building a business, you're putting yourself out there, but you don't know when you're going to get paid. (laughs) You know, I remember when I quit my nine to five job and I moved to Mexico, I was like, oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I'll get clients. It's no problem. I'll just start putting myself on social media. Six months later, like, I still didn't have clients. And I was like, what the heck? Like, what's going on? And that's when I finally started to look into getting a business coach because I was like, obviously, something is not working here. And let me tell you so much was not working because I wasn't doing nearly what I needed to be doing in order to bring clients and people into my world, in order to provide value, in order to really put myself out there in a big way to attract so many clients. So let's dive into this energetic work, right? Because it's one thing to do the physical work, like it said. It's one thing to get clear on who you are, what you want. It's one thing to get clear on your messaging, your branding, how you're showing up, that's all great. What about the energy? What about the beliefs and the patterns that are underlying every single action that you do, every single word that you say, okay? So there is a study that was conducted at the University of Chicago in 1996, and I'm pretty sure that they have done several other studies since then. I know this is a little outdated, but the, it's still super relevant. So Dr. Blas Lotto, I don't know how to say his name. So this Dr. Blas Lotto takes this group of basketball players and he gets them to do uh, free throws, right? Try to get the ball in the net. They take a tally of every player's free throws. The basketball players were then divided into three different groups. And actually, it says they were students, so maybe they weren't basketball players, whatever. They were um, divided into three groups, and they were asked to perform three separate tasks over a 30-day period. So each group has a, had a different task, right? So the control group was the first group. They were told not to touch a basketball don't practice, don't play, nothing for 30 days. The second group were told to practice shooting free throws for half an hour a day for 30 days. The third group was 
um, to go to the gym every day for 30 days. But instead of practicing physical free throws, they were to spend half an hour with their eyes closed, visualizing hitting every single free throw. Okay. And so after 30 days, they bring the students back and they are looking at their progress. So they do the free throws again. And what they notice is that the group, the control group who didn't do anything, they showed no improvement overall. Their number of three, fr three free throws, three free throws um, were the same. The second group who practiced physically every day showed a 24% improvement. So they practice every single day for 30 minutes for 30 days. The third group who only did visualization, only visualized them getting the ball in the net, showed a 23% improvement. So the second group, remember, was 24%, and the visualization group was 23%. That's not a huge difference. So the study is showing that, obviously, visualization and the mind is super powerful and what we practice in our minds is like we can almost say it's just as good as physically practicing so let's take an example right now of um let's say you're starting a brand new business i remember showing up on stories was so hard for me in the beginning uh i went live oh my god you guys the first time i ever went live on instagram I had a whole script laid out, okay? I had this script laid out and these talking points and I went live and I remember one person showed up and half, no, not even halfway through, I think it was five minutes in, I went, this is so stupid and I closed the live because nobody was there and I felt dumb. So obviously we have improved uh, since then significantly, but um, anyway, this is an example like where you can use things like visualization to and also physical practice to get better. And so this was like five years ago, right? When I showed up live, I do lives now like easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I can show up, I can be myself. I can talk, I can like channel, if you will, download, just share my experience, my expertise. I have a whole library of trainings where I'm doing this and the content that comes from these trainings is like divine. It's like so pure and so potent and I could not do this for the life of me when I was first starting my business but the combination of practicing and also visualizing because I have used visualization a lot in my business visualizing my results visualizing my soulmate clients coming to me visualizing my programs filled and actually I have to tell you a story about that as well that has all helped me to get to where I am today I see so many business owners um, I wouldn't even call them business owners. They are people who want to start their business, but they're doing everything in the back end, right? Which is great to set up systems. Like that's great and needed and necessary. But the the stuff that most people need help with is developing the confidence to actually put themselves out there, right? Um, and that's where definitely coaching comes in, obviously. Hi. <laughs> I can help you. Um, but yeah. So, okay, let's step now that we've kind of got that cleared, um, that there is evidence around, you know, how the mind works and how that's a powerful tool. I want to share with you um, my experience with one of my ever, my first ever programs that I launched. Actually, it wasn't one of my first ever programs. I had launched programs before, um, but this one that I launched was so clear on who it was for. I was clear on how I was going to launch. I was clear on the fact that, and this is actually very energetical. So I was very clear on the fact that I needed slash and wanted to show up and serve my audience. No strings attached. I just really felt like, you know, I need to show up and serve. I need to show up and be a leader. I need to share the tools that I have. Obviously, I wanted people to join my program, but I knew this was the key here. I knew that those clients would come. I didn't have um, doubts that those clients would come. And I think this is a really big missing piece for people. Um, I noticed that a lot of entrepreneurs, 
I'm a very aware person, right? But it's not until sometimes like retrospectively that we notice or realize the actions that we are taking are actually a result of uh, what we're believing. And an example is that, you know, in the past, I maybe like come day five of a launch, I get so exhausted and so tired and I didn't believe anybody was coming. So like, obviously, if I'm like not believing that people are coming, if I'm not believing that people are going to purchase my program, that's going to create a physical effect. And I don't care what you say about like the mind and the body and the soul. I believe it's all connected. And I believe our body shows us, you know, what we believe to be true. The symptoms like tiredness, for example, are just a manifestation of what we believe. And while, yes, our body can feel tiredness, and while, yes, we do need to take breaks and rest during a launch, that's super key. If we are not minding our mind, if we are not working on our beliefs and wholeheartedly believing that our program is already sold and that we don't have to push, force, like do all this crazy, out of alignment, energetically fucked up shit, Uh, it just goes so differently, you know? I remember when I was first starting my business, sales felt really hard for me. And I still sometimes fall back, you know, when I'm in an energy of fear, when I fear where money's coming from, when I fear that I'm going to run out of money, my energy gets like it it, um, mirrors or reflects that fear. And then my words, my actions start to reflect that fear. My actions might become a little chaotic or a little scattered or a little desperate. And this happens a lot in the industry, um, in any industry, right? Like if you are feeling nervous or fearful of anything, like whether that's like fearful of losing clients um, or fearful of like where your next client's going to come from, that, that will reflect in your in your energy and in your words. And I think I talked about this last week, but the words that we use are so key for, for hitting our soulmate client. Our words are a reflection of our energy and our clients read our words, which has our energy encoded into it, if this makes sense. So that's why it's super key to be super on top of your energy. So I think what really messes people up when they're going to launch and why a lot of launches flop is that um, people stop selling and stop showing up when they start to really believe that things are not going to sell, right? What's the point of showing up? What's the point of opening my store doors if no one's going to come through the doors today, right? What we need to go into our launches with is... I am so excited to open my store doors today and see who comes into my reality. See who walks into my store, right? See what kind of purchase they make. I'm so excited to open my store doors today. And I think a lot of online entrepreneurs, and this is something I've really struggled with in the past, and something that my my past, one of my past coaches actually told me is like when you order something off of a menu in a restaurant, you don't ask the server five times if it's coming, right? So it's the same thing with manifestation. Like, let's say you're asking the universe for $1,000 this month. Let's say you're asking for two to 4,000. Let's say you're asking for $10,000 this month. You got to put your order through and trust that it's coming and continue to take the actions of trusting, of believing, And I think this is a big thing is that either people don't trust and believe so they don't take the actions or they don't trust and believe so they try to force the outcome. And I'm going to talk about force in a little bit. Or they're checking in over and over and over again. And not only does this create a super annoying customer, you're also wasting a ton of energy worrying for no reason. But the thing is like when you're taking action in your business, when you're promoting yourself in the online space, when you are talking to a prospect, 
It doesn't matter who you're talking to or what you're talking to them about, what you're trying to sell them on. If you come from like, this is a person and I'm here to serve this person and I trust and believe that the universe is sending me clients in more than just one way. Like we don't know where your clients are going to come from. And I have an example that I actually want to share with you, I think in this episode. If you can show up with the energy of what I desire is already there, it's already done. Like My soulmate clients are already in my program. And so if they are already in my program, would I be showing up to a prospective client call super stressed out about selling them on my program if the universe has already taken care of it, right? And so this is an approach that I take with my sales. Like I always, there's a lot of people there that will sell, they sell things to people that people do not need to buy, right? And so this is something that I don't, (laughs) I don't like doing. Um, I'm a very ethical person. I want to make sure that the person's ready. I want to make sure that they are willing to do the work and that it's the right fit for them. Because there's nothing worse than a client walking away from an investment that they are not happy with because you sold them something that they didn't actually require or need, right? And that's not the way that I do business. So whenever I approach my client calls or my sales calls, if you will, I always approach them with, I already have the number of clients that I desire. And so how can I serve this person who's in front of me today? Right? And if they do want to work with me and they've got obstacles around investment, like, okay, let's talk about it. But I'm never ever going to ask somebody on a call for their credit card. I'm never going to make someone feel guilty for not being able to invest in my programs at the time, and it's unfortunate, but a lot of the industry does operate in this way. So when we can kind of let go of that, let go of this energetic fucked upness, if you will, and really step into our heart and serving people from the heart, that is where, that's where the magic happens, really. That's when you are going to start to see clients showing up out of nowhere. You are showing up with your heart you are leading from the heart. You are taking intuitive action or intuitive. You are taking inspired action based on and intuitive action, right? Aligned action, whatever you want to call it, based on intuitive guidance. And that is what's leading you. That is what's driving you. And we don't get stuck in the head, right? We don't get stuck in the like, what if this doesn't happen? Like, what if this person thinks this about me? And it always comes back to like, how can I show up and serve? A lot of people get stuck in their heads because they think everything is about them, right? Like, oh, what will they think if I reach out? Or what will they think if they know I'm doing this business? Or what will they think if I'm trying to sell them on an MLM product, right? Whatever it is. So we got to sort through the bullshit, right? Sort through our energetics. Fix your energy. Remove what doesn't serve you. And get into that flow with the universe so that you are taking those inspired intuitive actions. And that I feel like, like we can talk about branding, we can talk about messaging, we can talk about how to attract more soulmate clients. But when you are in the flow and you are doing the things that you are guided to do, that is where the real magic is. That is where alignment comes in. That is where soulmate clients come in. That's where your soulmate comes in. That's where friends come out of nowhere but you've got to fix the shit within you've got to clear out the bullshit you've got to clear out the fucked up energy that does not align with where you want to be okay so essentially what I'm trying to say (laughs) in all of this I really hope this is making sense to you um and if it's not It might be because you are newer to business. It might be because you haven't experienced flow really with the universe and that's okay. Um, I want to invite you to come to the aligned, no, what is it? (laughs) Magnetize more money in your business masterclass. I'm going to share more about it at the end of this episode, but I want to invite you to come and we can start to um, take some action, some big actions forward so that you can start to attract soulmate clients more easily into your business 
so that you can get into that flow. I want to help you kind of remove those blockages that are preventing you from showing up as the, the leader that you really are born to be. So essentially what happens is when you are in the flow, when you are connected with the universe, you are going with the flow, you've cleared your blocks, you're working with the universe and creating what you're being asked to create. You're doing the work that you are being asked or called to do. The universe is sending you the people because you are in flow, right? Your doors are open. This is what you're meant to do. All right, we're co-creating with the universe. The universe wants to give you the people that you're meant to help, right? The universe literally wants to help you, but you got to be listening to the actions. you got to be listening to the guidance. You're doing what you need to be doing. You're not stuck in your head or trying to figure out how you're going to make it work, how you're going to get to 10K, how you're going to do this, how you're going to do that, all the steps that you need to take, and then, and then, and then, and then. I feel like a lot of people get stuck and caught up in their head and then they don't believe that they can reach their goal because their numbers don't line up. They're trying to control the way in which the numbers happen. And let me tell you, when you're working with the universe, you cannot be in control of how the numbers happen. You just have to be in flow, like be good with your money in terms of like having a good relationship with your money. Ask for what it is that you desire, but you got to take the action that the universe is telling you. You got to take in order to get to that desire. Okay. So you're also, when you're in this flow, you're not, um, you're not holding yourself back anymore. You're not telling yourself that you can't. You're not settling for a living a life that is lazy. You are ready to do the work. You are ready to show up. You are ready to stop self-sabotaging and stop holding yourself back because you don't believe you can do it. You are changing your frequency, right? So when you start to do this work, and this is a lot of the work that I do with my one-on-one -on -one clients, um, but when you are shifting your frequency, you are believing that you get to have what you desire and you start manifesting those desired results because you are taking action, because you are following the guidance, right, of the universe. So the last thing I want to touch on is the difference between doing what we are called to do and doing what we want to do. There's a lot of content out there in the world, like do what you want, live the life of your dreams, blah, blah, blah. And while yes, I believe that our dreams were placed in our hearts for a reason, I believe that the reason I wanted to live a laptop lifestyle is divine and is guided uh living a laptop lifestyle is not like me just traveling 24 7 and not doing any work <laughs> you know what i mean i am not here to purely like we are all here to enjoy life but we are also here this is my belief okay we are also here to give back we are also here to do our work like what are we doing on this planet we came here for a reason Part of that reason is to enjoy life, but I always, always, always believe that there's a deeper purpose for us being here. It's not selfish to live the life of your dreams. It's not selfish to take time off. I believe we need to do that. I believe it is of our divinest purpose to learn how to receive, to learn how to live life to the fullest. And also, it's not just about you right? Like it is about you, but like, what are you doing to give back? What are you doing to help the universe shift, you know, if you will, like spread love, like heal? I don't know. Like what is your calling? And that's where we come back to stepping into your calling. And now when it comes to your calling though, it's very easy for us to do what we want. It would be super easy for me to be like, no, nope, going to play today, going to my mom's visiting right now and it's been the hugest distraction. But I have to be very disciplined and like, no, I can't do this today. I need to work on the podcast. I have an episode coming out, you know. Um, and so following your calling takes discipline. It's not easy. We can get results with ease when we are in the flow, but you've got to do the work, Right. Following your calling is not a piece of cake. It takes commitment. It takes purposefully creating the space to work on your calling. 
It takes courage. It takes sorting through the lies that you've been told that you can't do what you are being called to do or that you are not good enough to help people or that people don't want your help or whatever it is, right? But when you follow your calling, instead of just following what you want, what you desire, whatever, like, okay, let me put it this way. I used to not show up for myself because I didn't want to show up. And not just like for myself, but for my business. I don't want to show up for my business. I don't feel like it today. And this is the wrong way to look at it. If you are still showing up for your business when you feel like it, you're not probably going to have a business in five years. Like just saying, Um, not to be rude or anything. I'm just like purely speaking from experience. The reason that we show up when we show up for our calling, the reason we show up is because we are so rooted in what we believe and what we desire to create and what we know we have to create. Like that big vision that not only nourishes us, that gives us the $5 million house on the ocean or like whatever you want, right? Like the retreat center, the jungle, the this, the the travel, the whatever. It gives you that, but it also gives you a sense of doing something good here on earth. It gives you that sense of purpose. It feels like really, really good to you, you know? I believe that when we're solely living for ourselves, we're not happy. We are not happy when we are only living for ourselves. And I've seen this countless times in people. People who live for themselves are typically very grumpy. So to answer the the big question here, which I feel like I've kind of just talked and talked for a while here today, but to answer this question of like, how can soulmate clients come out of nowhere? Soulmate clients come out of nowhere when you have created something that is your calling. You are showing up not just for you, but for the people And you have removed the obstacles and the control, the tightness, the forceful energy around what it is that you need to do, are required to do, whatever. And you learn to trust in the process. This is when soulmate clients come out of nowhere, right? This is when things will start to shift. And it takes time. And if you're ready to start manifesting clients out of nowhere, if you are someone who is either new in business or you're really just trying to fill your programs with clients, you're like fucking ready to work with people that you love to work with, to do the work that you love to do, to sell the products that you would love to sell, to empower people, to hear more yeses rather than no's, right? I want to help you. I want to, I want to help you. So everything that I'm sharing as of late, actually pretty much everything I share um, on the podcast anyway, is part of my aligned magnetic and profitable framework. And this is a framework that's taken me over five years as a business owner, 10 years as a marketing professional to put together. Uh, And actually also five years, let's add five years of psychology degree. And I'm going to be teaching this framework inside of my free Magnetize More Money in Your Business Masterclass, where I'll be giving you my secrets to growing your service-based business and attracting soulmate clients more easily without the frustration or the hustle so you can reach your money goals this quarter. So if that piques your interest, if you would like to come, it is a free event and I would love to share what I know with you to help you get out there in a bigger way this year. Um, I'm also releasing a brand new space. I've been beta testing it. I actually just started beta testing it last week, but I'll be releasing a brand new space. It's called the Aligned and Magnetic Business Academy, and it is being offered to masterclass people at a super special rate, Um, and it'll be released to the public shortly after. So... This is the space for people to grow their business, to get their business off of the ground. It's a very fair investment considering everything else that's out there and the investment is going to be double or triple um, by next year. So this is a really great time to get in and help me build this out. Everything that you need to know is in the show notes. So come to our masterclass, come and see what my framework is all about. Um, Let me help you 
And if you are in alignment with the Aligned and Magnetic Business Academy, then I would love to see you there as well. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode today and I will chat with you soon. Thank you so much for tuning into the podcast today. If you like what you heard, I would love it if you left a review. If you like my vibe, come and hang with me in my Facebook or Telegram group. I'll drop the link to my email list below where you can get instant access. Make sure you check the show notes for any other links that I mentioned today. And until next time, I'm sending you waves of abundance.